Hi everyone, so in this video I'm going to continue talking about kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy. And the reason is kinetic energy is really uh, a lot of the different uh, concepts we talked about uh, require understanding of kinetic energy. And gravitational potential energy is not something that we necessarily um, have, you know, a lot of relevance to in terms of chemistry, but understanding the idea of gravitational potential energy would allow you to uh, have an understanding of other things like chemical potential energy and whatnot that you'll have to learn at some point. So uh, having an understanding of gravitational potential energy and the way to calculate it would allow you to better understand um, <clears throat> things like chemical potential energy and how reactions uh, you know go forward or reverse something that you'll learn later on in Chem 12. So as far as kinetic energy is concerned as you know from the previous topic uh, the equation that represents the kinetic energy of an uh, object is given as this which is kinetic energy is equal to half times m v square where m is the mass of the object in kilograms and v is the velocity or the speed of the object and the unit of that is meters per second. So when you multiply all of these um, units together you get kilogram meter square per second square and that is the unit of energy. That actually is equal to a, a joule, which we'll talk about later when we talk about units of energy. Now, gravitational potential energy, of course, uh, is, has a different equation. And uh, in the description that I mentioned uh, in the previous video, talking about the different heights uh, of the person on the swing having different gravitational potential energy, you'll see that height is a component of the energy equation for gravitational potential energy. In fact, it's equal to mgh, where m is the mass of the object, again in kilograms. Uh, g here is what we refer to as the gravitational acceleration or acceleration due to gravity. And gravity is, you know, the, the constant, the gravity constant depends on the size of the, the mass of the object, really. Uh, so on Earth, this value is 9.8 meter per second square. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, at the moon, for example, it's, it has a different value. It's a smaller value because moon, uh, the moon is smaller and has less mass than Earth. Um, the height of the object is represented as letter H here. And really, in this case, when we're talking about height, we're talking about the height from sea level, right? So we define zero as the sea level or, uh, or surface of the Earth uh, at the sea level. And then everything else is measured relative to that point. And remember, definition of potential energy is, is energy that an object has relative to a specific reference point. So in this case our reference point for gravitational potential energy is sea level. Okay so here I just want to work through uh, an example of just you know showing you how you can use these equations that we talked about in the previous slide to calculate and to compare energy of two different objects. So in this case we're gonna be calculating kinetic energy of two objects one of them being a um, a six-year-old boy uh, on his bike who is going to be biking at 30 miles per hour and the uh, weights of these two objects which is the boy and his bike is given here and then you're comparing the kinetic energy of that boy with the uh, kinetic energy of a bird uh, that's flying at 60 miles per hour uh, and the bird weighs about 12 pounds okay and there's conversion factors given here uh, to compare the masses, I mean the uh, energies of these two uh, objects. Okay, so I'm going to work on this in the next uh, page. Okay, so the uh, first off, you know, we want to compare kinetic energy. So the first thing we need to look at is just what is the equation for kinetic energy. And remember that that's just half mv square where half is uh, where m is the mass and v is the velocity so now what we want to do is express the kinetic energy of both of those objects right so first is the boy and remember the boy and the bike is one unit here because they're moving both of them are moving at that speed so we're going to calculate this both and I'm just going to write the equation right here so half now times the mass of the weight of the boy is 32 the, for the bike is 9 so we're going to add both of these that's uh, with units of pounds so then you have to convert that pounds to kilogram and the conversion factors are provided so I'm just going to put in 1 and 2.2 here one, every, 1 kilogram is about 2.2 pounds and then so that's just the mass component 
And then you have the velocity components, which is um, <clears throat> 30 miles per hour is how fast the boy is going. Sorry about that. 30 miles per hour. So then we're going to write 30 miles per hour. And then so then what we're going to do is uh, we're going to multiply that by the, oh, I guess I just changed the color there. Uh, convert that to seconds. So remember that I'm going to do hour and seconds here. And one hour is 3,600 seconds. And then lastly, I'm going to take out the miles and convert it to meter. Because remember that the unit of the speed uh, for energy is expressed as meters per second. That's why I'm going to convert this to second, convert that to meter. And so in uh, one mile, we have about 1609 uh, meter, okay? 1609 meter. And this whole thing here is your velocity. So because the equations say velocity has to be squared, I'm going to square that, okay? So that's your um, calculation. And so if you calculate this out, you should get a number that's 1676 kilograms meter square per second square. Remember what I said is that that's called joule. That unit is called joule. Now you can do the same calculation for the uh, bird, which is your goose here. And if you do the same calculation, which is to, you know, convert all of these appropriately, you should get a value of 1962 joules. So in this case, we can see that the goose is actually um, the object with the higher kinetic energy compared to the to the boy okay with the bike so that might be a surprise to some of you but you can see that the speed component is squared so if an object is moving at a high speed a lot of times it might actually have a higher kinetic energy than a an object that you think is heavier because the uh, the uh, kit here is actually quite a bit heavier the kit and the bike combined together but actually uh, as you can see the speed um, component is squared so that makes a bigger difference in terms of kinetic energy okay